Holy Father, we are, first of all, incredibly grateful to come before you this morning, God. We know with our minds that we worship a mighty God. We read about it in your word. We are reminded when we look out at nature. Um, we are reminded when we see a soul come up out of the waters of baptism and know that you are powerful, know that you can transform an ordinary life into an extraordinary life, God, that you created with your breath, you brought life into existence. You, you're mighty. We know this. We read about it every day in your word, God. We have seen the proof of it in our lives, in the transformed lives that you've given us. And we continue to see the proof of it every single day, God. And yet, Father, we know that as we live in this fallen world, we are we often are, um, or we can succumb to the challenges that surround us, Father. We can succumb to the um, ways of the world and the philosophies of the world and um, the solutions of the world. And more than anything, God, we, we are coming before you this morning. We're here this morning together because we desire something greater. We want more, not just for our lives, but for the lives of the people around us. We want to give our neighbors more than what they have. And we know that that more only comes from you, God. It doesn't come from collecting things of this world. And Father, as we talk today about mental health, um, guide our thoughts, God. Guide our hearts. Guide my words as I speak. Um, let me speak not from what I do not know, but let me speak from what I know. Um, and let me speak, Father, from the words um, that you give us um, through scripture. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for the mercy you bestow upon us every single day, every minute, every second of every day. Um, though we are, are unworthy beings of such great love, you um, pick us up out of that muck and mire, God, and you take us into a holy place and um, we, we are washed clean and we are made worthy by your blood, Father. And we're thankful for that and offered in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. <clears throat> so yesterday we began a series on mental health. Um, again, uh, as Tony mentioned yesterday, I really want to make sure we understand that what we're not talking about is mental illness, right? There's a, there's a difference between mental illness and mental well-being and mental health. And we want to make that distinction because Tony and I are not experts. We, we, we have not studied this, so we can't speak on it, um, nor can we give anyone advice on it, and nor do we want to. Um, but we feel a responsibility as shepherds um, in the congregation to ensure that you um, know that your mental well-being is important. And we also know that within this time that we've been going through, that the more we've been confined to these small spaces, the more we've been sort of on top of each other in our homes, uh, in, in perhaps a, a condensed period of time that none of us have ever experienced. I don't know about you, but I, I've never been confined to my home in this manner, even with an illness for this length of time. And so um, that does things to us as people. It, it's like a little bit of a pressure cooker in terms of our feelings and emotions and our, our mental well-being. And so um, what we want to do is we, as, as we did with the women's event a few weeks ago, we want to open up the conversation so that you know, first of all, it's, it's important to talk about. It's not, it's, it's an interesting thing because for whatever reason, when this topic comes up, it is automatically something we feel uncomfortable with, right? And maybe more men than women um, in our society, but, um, but we're all made differently and we're all taught as we are growing up to cope and deal with things differently. And, and sometimes even culture plays into how we deal with things, right? Some cultures 
um, are very much um, task oriented and you just pick yourself up by the bootstraps and you move forward um, and you, know, you just get happy uh, because that's what you need to do. Um, and other cultures are different. And so I think what is important for us is that this is a conversation we learn to become comfortable with speaking. And before I want go into this, right, I want to say this, you know, some of us not only have to contend with our own mental well-being, but some of us actually have hereditaries that tend toward depression or tend toward anxieties or things like that. Um, and some of us even um, ourselves can tend toward those things. What we're hoping to do is we're hoping to highlight it's okay for all of us to talk you know, to someone if we are in a place where we feel I'm not good, I'm not well, instead of waiting until it's a crisis situation. Because I've known people who don't have mental illness um, in their family or have never experienced a mental crisis, but, but because of trying to cope with things and deal with things on their own and push through with their normal mechanisms, you know, they, they have, they've suffered a mental crisis. And so, so I think this is, it's, it's obvious, you know, even in our society that this is something that we need to be aware of as people and we need to take seriously as people. And we need to even be aware of it with each other. Um, what we're not saying is to become, you know, start reading things and start to become an expert on mental health and start diagnosing each other. Like that's actually more harmful than helpful. Um, but we need to say, hey, is, you know, you can, you can tell when something's not right with somebody or when they're just not themselves. Um, we can open up a conversation and say, hey, is there anything going on? Can we talk? Um, making this a more comfortable conversation. We are, we are much more comfortable talking about, you know, physical health or talking about something we learned in our jobs that can help us get a job. I remember when I worked as a, a recruiter, I had no problems in fellowships. If somebody was saying something about a job, I could say, hey, I'll send you something. It'll give you kind of the top 10 things to work on as you're going into an interview. I, it, it wasn't even like I felt like I was intrusive. I just was like, it's what I do for a living. I'm gonna help you. <laughs> like, it's what I do all the time. If I have a client and I have a candidate, I'm gonna sit down with that candidate. If I've already passed them my interview process and I want them to make it to the next step, I'm gonna coach you so that you make it through that next interview. Amantha's nodding her head because she's like, yes, that's what I do every day. But I say that to say I have no qualms telling people that. In the same way for me, spiritually speaking, I have no problems opening up the scriptures and saying, hey, let me show you something in the Bible that I think is going to help you. Why? Because it's what I do. You are the same in your area of expertise. Um, we do that with a lot of things in our life. But mental health... And I think one of the reasons we do it is because we confuse mental health and mental illness. We combine the two in some way. I'm gonna read again what Tony read and then I'm, we're gonna jump into some scripture and then we'll talk. <clears throat> mental illness, and this is taken from an actual paper um, from National Men Mental Health Society. Mental illnesses are described as disturbances in thoughts feelings and perceptions that are severe enough to affect day-to-day -day functioning. Some examples are anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, and mood disorders such as major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder. Mental health, however, is a state of well-being um, as, we, uh, as we all have it. Just like we each have a state of physical health, we also each have our mental health to look after. It's not just about surviving, it's about thriving, it's about enjoying your life, it's about having a sense of purpose. 
And that's about being able to manage life's highs and lows. So the second is what we're talking about. And for some, when this kind of topic comes up, they're like, well, Melanie, we're Christians. Like our mental health, or it's, it's great. We have Jesus. We get to go to Jesus. And we know that we're saved. And we know that our purpose on earth is not like the purpose that other people have. And this is true. That is something for us that we, it is the, as the scriptures say, the anchor for our soul. It roots us so that we, we don't fly here and there. And, and when we're helping each other, we, ought, we always ought to bring people back to the anchor of our soul. Not philosophy, not the 10 best ways, but the first thing is the anchor. The first thing is Jesus. The first thing is your faith. The first thing is your hope in heaven. That's got to be what we communicate as the source of someone's strength, right? And so in that, let's, let's begin with the Bible, and then we'll talk a little bit um, about how Tony and I believe mental well-being is all throughout the Bible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of what God desires. So I'm going to read three scriptures. The first is in Philippians 4. It's one we know well in verse four to six. Um, Paul says, do not be anxious. I'm reading from the ESV, by the way, the English standard version. <clears throat> do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's what Paul says, keeping in mind that Paul was writing this when he was not in a good place. He was, he was imprisoned. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Just the one verse. And then John 14, 27, this is Jesus telling, this is the scripture, this is the passage of scripture Jesus is communicating to um, disciples. And I don't know if you guys remember John 17, how we, we read that long prayer of Jesus. This is in the middle of that where he's communicating them to be strong, even though he's going, he's going to leave them a comforter that will take care of them. He says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I don't think it would be a stretch to say that our mental well-being is greatly affected by how we interpret our lives, right? If we are going through something in our life that is difficult, how we interpret that difficulty and the length of time of that difficulty has a great effect on our mental health. If we are able to take those things in, and as difficult as they are, we're able to process them. Oh, the last scripture was John 14, verse 27. If we're able to take those things in as they come and process them the way the, scripture is, the scriptures are describing here, um, and the many other scriptures that you know, obviously, but if we're able to do that, our mental well-being stays in a good place, right? It's healthy. It's it's, we're still able to get up every day without a heavy feeling, you know. Um, we're, we're able to rise above what's happening and still see hope and joy and goodness. But occasionally in our lives, there are times when these things are important, like do not be anxious about anything, takes on a meaning that, it wouldn't ordinarily, right? Because in that moment, we are either filled with anxiety, we're filled with fear. 
um, because our circumstances are overwhelming us. And, and oftentimes in the middle of those situations, when we try to read these scriptures, it's frustrating because we go, do not be anxious about anything. How do I not be anxious about anything in this moment that I'm anxious? Like, <laughs> and then we're like, okay, present every kiss, cast everything on Jesus. Okay, God, and, you know, and daily we'll try to give these things over to God in an, in an anxiety filled prayer. Right? <laughs> and we're, we find ourselves caught in this wanting to give over to God, not knowing how to give ourselves over to God, trying to grapple with the scriptures that we know, the spiritual disciplines that we know and understand, um, all the while trying to obey these scriptures, right? Trying to put into practice. One of the things I love about John 14, 27 is Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. And then he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Let, neither let them be afraid. I, I can only share what I know, right? And I think there was about, about a few years ago, there was a time in my life where I've shared this with some of you. I, this, I think so many things were coming at Tony and I, so many difficult situations, like difficult situation after difficult situation after difficult situation. And, and as you guys know, I've shared this, it, it's not, they weren't like, oh man, you know, this, I, I don't even know what would be a simple thing to share, but you know, it was, our, our daughter having a baby and, and not being married. Like I'm talking that level of difficulty, right? And that was one situation. And there were others. There was us coming out of the ministry after 25 years for Tony, 23 years, trying to figure out, first of all, our identity in Christ. We, most of our Christian life, we had both served in the full-time ministry. Now, we had to figure out who we were outside of this role that was wrapped up in our faith. Tony had a way of processing that and I had a way of processing that. And if you know me, you know, I have to process things to feel okay. And if you know me, you know, mental well-being is hugely important to me. And emotional well-being is hugely important to me. And so I do a lot of work on myself. It, it was a time in my life, though, where nothing that I did was working. Nothing. I used to tell Tony, like, he, he, we would be, you know, I'd go to work, come home, he'd go to work, come home, and he'd say, hey, babe, let's, let's um, go lead this Bible talk for someone. We weren't leading a Bible talk at the time. Let's go lead this thing. And I would be like, Tony, I don't even think I have that in me. Like, I... And I would use this term fragile. I was like, I feel fragile. I don't, what you're used to being able to expect from me, I don't have it. I just don't have it. I don't know what to tell you. And the thing about being trained as a leader, being trained in the ministry, you are trained to be good. Like you're trained to be ready to it's like a first responder, for example, right? You're trained for the crisis. You're trained to help. You're trained. You guys know what I'm talking about. And so I don't always carry those things on the outside. So people, so I'm used to that. So even my husband wasn't even aware of how intensely weak I felt inside. I say all of that to say there was, I had to dig, I had to go to a place where I've never been before. And I actually truly believe, looking back at that time, God was leading me to a place I'd never been before. Because scriptures that I'd read hundreds, maybe even thousands of times, I had to look at them fresh. I had to look at, 
I had to wrestle with God when he told me, peace I leave with you. But when he said, do not be anxious, I had to wrestle with him for months. I, and I, I remember saying, God, I don't believe this. I literally don't believe this right now. I don't believe that I cannot be anxious because I'm trying, I'm doing all these things, I'm trying. And I think every single day, God was like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And I think the more I wrestled with God and a friend, Beth, the more we fought together to find the truth of the scripture, the stronger we became. And I think God revealed where peace was to be found because it wasn't gonna be from circumstances. It wasn't gonna be from me waiting for the day when these circumstances shifted and the light at the end of the tunnel and the bow, you know, the neat little bow we wanna tie at the end of a suffering, like where we go, look what God did, <laughs> right? That neat little bow, we all want it. When we're going through it, we all want God to tie it up nicely and go, here you go, God. Here you go, world. Look what God did. What we all as sisters and brothers with each other need to learn is when God is not ready to tie that situation up, in those moments, in those places of weakness is where we need each other. It's where we need to take each other back to God's word. And it's where we need to hold each other's hand until we're led to where we can say, yes, I believe you, God. Yes, that's true. However long it takes however long it takes for us to get there. Because when we can say that, then in the, middle of, in the middle of chaos, we can say it as well with my soul. In the middle of chaos, we can say, I have a peace that transcends understanding. Why does it transcend understanding? Because understanding says, given your situation, you should be a mess. Why are you so at peace? It transcends what should be. So as we have this conversation opened up and we look at different areas of our mental well-being, um, I would encourage you to begin with God. I would encourage you, if this is a scary area for you, if, if Tony and I are opening up a can of beans for you, <laughs> you're like... I don't even want to go there. Go to God first and then go to someone um, and begin this conversation. And, and we may even be opening up something for you where it's beyond us. We can be your shoulder and we can be your arms and we can be on our knees in prayer, but perhaps professional help is needed. And as you get that help, we'll be here when you come back from it and we'll hold your arms and we'll walk you with you through it. And maybe you'll even teach us something that we didn't know um, that we can grow from. But begin with God and then let's turn to each other as we walk through this time. Um, amen.